For this lesson, we're going to be taking a look at the chain rule, which is, brings us back to a concept that we looked at in advanced functions, which was the idea of composite functions, a function of another function. So that means that the input of one function, sorry, the output of one function is the input to another function. And I've got an example here, first of all, just in composite notation. So I've defined h of x as f of g of x. And that means that the argument of f is actually the entire function g. Now, the chain rule, the way that works, and as is the case with the other rules, the product rule, the quotient rule, there's a certain, there's almost a certain rhythm to uh, remembering this uh, when you say it, when you when you are working through it. And so the way that I remember this, the derivative, so the derivative of the function is the derivative of the outer function with the inner function unchanged multiplied by the derivative of the inner function. So it's actually reasonably straightforward in principle. The only uh, place where you're going to run into difficulty with this is that these algebraically this can get quite involved depending on the complexity of both your outer function and your inner function. Uh, are there quotients involved? Uh, maybe the quotient rule might get involved, that sort of thing. Things can get quite long. Another way of looking at this, if we've defined this more in terms of y equals, I'm still writing it as f of g of x, so y equals f of g of x. Then another way we can think of this is we can redefine the inner function. So in this case, I've redefined the inner function as u equals g of x. So y is equal to f of u. And then when I take my derivative, y prime is f prime of u. And then I take the derivative of that inner part. So we call that du by dx. This second form, this alternate form, I show it to you because there's a possibility you may run into it. You may see it in your own textbook or if someone's talking to you about this in another setting. But this is a form that is going to become increasingly common as you move on, if you go past this course and deal with calculus. And in university calculus, I would venture to say that this is actually the more common form. And this idea of changing, so this is known as a change in variable from g of x over to u, that's actually something that gets used quite a bit. But for now, don't worry about that too much. Focus on this kind of straightforward definition. The derivative of the function is equal to the derivative of the outer function with the inner function unchanged multiplied by the derivative of the inner function. A more complicated version of this actually involves multiple levels of composition. So a function within a function within a function. But again, don't expect to see that too much. So here I've laid out four different functions for you and we're going to apply the chain rule in order to take the derivative of each function. So let's go ahead and start with A. I'll just go ahead and rewrite it here. So y is equal to x cubed plus 2x squared minus 3x plus 5 all to the power 4. Now if we think of that in terms of let me just change the color here. We're, I'm just going to do this kind of like a rough idea. What do I actually have here? What's my inner function? So my inner function is this x cubed plus 2x squared minus 3x plus 5. So my inner function, I'm going to call that g of x. And g of x is equal to this thing. So x cubed plus 2x squared minus 3x plus 5. My outer function, so I've got f of g of x, the outer function is me taking this to the power 4. So f of x is simply x to the power 4. And then if I do f of g of x, wherever I see an x, I replace it with this whole expression. So it might be useful, if you think about it, it might actually be useful at this point to handle these in their simpler forms. So let's figure out, well, what is the derivative of the inner function, g prime of x? So that's going to be 3x squared plus 4x minus 3. That's the derivative of this polynomial. What is f prime of x? That's equal to 4x cubed. And let's go over here before I switch back to my original color. And let's just remind ourselves that
the chain rule says that y prime says that the derivative of this whole thing is equal to the derivative of the outer function which is f prime but still using the inner function as the argument so it becomes f prime of g of x and then we're going to multiply that whole thing by g prime of x so the derivative of the outer function using the unchanged inner function as my argument multiplied by the derivative of the inner function so now what can I write the derivative of the outer function that's here that's f prime of x that's 4x cubed 4 something cubed but the something instead of x I'm actually using g of x I'm using my original inner function so that inside this bracket is going to be x cubed plus 2x squared minus 3x plus 5. And now I'm going to multiply that by the derivative of the inner function. The derivative of the inner function was g prime of x. So that's going to be multiplied by 3x squared plus 4x minus 3. Now, I could take this a step further. Right? Well, actually, you know what? No, I couldn't take this a step further, further because it would get terribly ugly. I'm certainly not going to cube this whole polynomial so that I can expand this and simplify it. So, to be honest with you, where I am right now, that didn't work out very nicely. Where I am right now, this is actually going to be my final form. That's going to be my final answer. Now you could actually go to this directly. If Let's go back and take a look at our original. Take the derivative of this, that 4 is going to come in front, and then it's going to turn into a 3. So that's just the power rule, because it's a pretty simple x to the 4. We leave the inner function alone inside the derivative, and then we take the derivative of that separately. So the derivative of x cubed plus 2x squared minus 3x is 3x squared, plus 4x minus 3. Let's take a look at b. f of x is equal to the square root of x squared minus 5. So let's, I'm going to write it a different way this time. What is my inner function? My inner function is the thing inside the square root. So since I've got f of x, this time I'm going to call my inner function g of x, and that's equal to, actually, well, it doesn't, you know what, it doesn't actually matter how you write these. So, I, yes, I'm going to go ahead and call this, the inner function is g of x, which is x squared minus 5. My outer function is, I'm, I'm going to call that h of x which is equal to, this one is the square root of x, it's the square root of whatever's in here, and I'm just going to remind you that's actually the same thing as x to the power one-half. Generally, turning these things into some sort of power rule, if you have the option, is going to make things a lot easier to deal with. And so, I end up with f prime of x is equal to the derivative of the outer function. So, you know what, I'm just going to, I'm going to write that the same way I did over here x squared minus 5, but I'm going to write it all to the 1 half. And now when I take f prime of x, I'm going to do this without writing out the derivatives of each of these separately. I'm just going to be really careful. I'm going to take the derivative of the outer function, so that would be to the, the something to the power 1 half. So the derivative of that is I bring down the 1 half in front, and I keep that bracket the same, except for now I have to subtract 1 from this, so that gives me an exponent of negative one-half. The argument of that, the inner function, doesn't change in the derivative. And now I'm going to multiply that by the derivative of the inner function. So what is the derivative of this? It is simply 2x. Now this one I could do some simplifying. For example, I've got a 2 here that divides out with this 2 in the denominator. Each of them become 1's. And because I've got this to the negative one-half now, I could leave it with an exponent negative one-half, but I might also write this as x over, and when I bring this down to the denominator, that's x squared minus 5. 
Now that's, that's now become x squared minus 5 to the positive 1 half. And that is equal to x over, and we could also write that as x squared minus 5 all square rooted. Now this at this point it's debatable. We've already talked about the idea of rationalizing. But when we rationalize a numerator or a denominator, well, we rationalized a numerator specifically so we could take a limit. But we're not taking limits right now because we know these different rules for derivatives. Rationalizing a denominator, whenever you get an answer, something like 1 over root 3, I always want you to rationalize that. You should always multiply that by root 3 over 3. But when you have an algebraic expression, it becomes debatable whether or not you should rationalize. So for now, I'm going to say that when you get to this point, you should, that's a, that's a good enough place to stop. You have a perfectly valid algebraic expression here. And it's particularly important here not to rush to rationalization because we might end up in the future, we're going to talk about taking multiple levels of derivatives. So for example, what about taking the derivative of this derivative? And we would like it to be in this form. We don't want it any more complicated than this. And rationalizing quite often will make a purely algebraic expression like this more complicated. So over here, we want to rationalize. But for something like this, I would stop at this point. OK, let's take a look at our third example. That's part C, g of x is equal to 2 over x plus 4. Now, a couple of ways that we could deal with this one. We could do this as a quotient law exp uh, question, because you can see I've got 2 over this. In general, though, I find it's usually easier if we turn these into just a product rule, or in this case, it's not even going to be a product rule. But what I am going to do is I'm going to take this um, term that's in the denominator and I'm going to give it an exponent of negative 1 and move it into the numerator. And now I'm going to very carefully take my derivative g prime of x is equal to now the first thing I want you to notice is we've got a constant here. This constant is going to be unaffected by this whole thing so we can just bring that constant out front and we can take our derivative of whatever's in here. So the constant just stays there. You don't need to put it in this big bracket. I'm just trying to make it really clear that it's going to be 2 times the derivative of whatever's left behind or whatever's left over. Now the derivative of this one, I take that negative 1 and I bring it in front of the bracket. I leave what's in the bracket alone, which is x plus 4. I modify the exponent using our power rule, so that becomes to the minus 2. And then I multiply that whole thing by the derivative of the inside, of the inner function. The inner function is x plus 4, but the derivative of that is simply equal to 1. And so now we take a look at simplifying. So as far as numbers go, I've got 2 times negative 1 times 1. So I end up with negative 2 x plus 4 to the power negative 2. And that's fine the way it is, although more typically we would represent that as negative 2 over x plus 4 all squared. And that's perfectly fine the way it is. Now I'm not really talking about restrictions. There was actually a restriction in this original value and you can see that the first derivative or the derivative has the same restriction. I am focusing right now on just the mechanical operation of taking the derivative. And our final example, y equals 1 over, well, you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to rewrite it as I suggested. I'm going to rewrite this as x cubed minus 27 to the negative 4. And now when I take my derivative, it just becomes very clean to do negative 4 bracket to the negative 5. See what I did there? I took this exponent down in front of the bracket, negative 4. I subtracted 1 from this exponent, became negative 5. I leave the inner function alone, x cubed minus 27. And then I'm going to multiply by the derivative of the inner function. 
and the derivative of the inner function is 3x squared because the derivative of the constant is just 0 so that would be 3x squared plus 0 but of course it's a waste to write that so we just write the 3x squared and now I've got negative 4 times 3x squared is negative 12x squared all divided by in one step I'm now going to take this whole thing which has a negative exponent I'm going to put that in the denominator x cubed minus 27 all to the power 5 and that's it there we have four examples of the chain rule and as you can see it's not terrible and in this case we didn't even end up with really awful expressions you just have to be really careful about applying it so here's some assigned work please take note of this for numbers four and five I say don't write in the form that they're suggesting and just a quick summary here's the chain rule so what are we going to do we take the derivative of the outer function leaving the inner function unchanged and then we take the derivative of the inner function and we multiply by that 